Welcome everybody, welcome to another video on the physics of our Earth. Um, relating a few things, uh, why we end up having a globe as opposed to the split cell system of reality. Now uh, I'm going to delve into the, the entire physics, the beginning of how it all came about. Uh, as you'll probably see the title, I've called this uh, or Galileo, etc. Didn't understand. They don't know because it's not. It is written, but it's esoteric. Otherwise, how did I come up with the um, the whole flat Earth design? From where to go? I, I had to get it from somewhere, and, and that's what I've done. I've studied ancient text and deciphered the coding. So this was for some other post, so we'll just run over it while it's on the board before I clean it off. So you know in the Adam and Eve story, in the beginning, uh, Adam, Adam, uh, God took one of Adam's bones from his rib, but uh, uh, more precisely he took, he split, he split the cell. It's to do with the whole rib cage, not just the bone. You know, there's no bone missing in Adam, a male, as opposed to female. He's just split them off, split cell. That's how we came to get the two hemispheres. Okay, so 2D image of a split cell system. But this split cell, this is a tropical gap. It ends up like this. You've got the northern hemisphere splits off to the south. Now it's an even split. Okay, this is what they came up with the globe. So there's an even split even split here, right? But you come to the 3D reality, the split cell system, this is just a slice through here. Okay? But you've got to understand the expansion from the north out to the south. Everything expands outward. So we, we do not see this because everything's all relative to the observer. So everything is always, in this situation, will appear even to the observer. You cannot see this expansion and contraction as he moves south or back north. So you've got the tropical gap here, you've got the tropical gap all the way around here. Okay? Now the even split, why we have the globe, is because of this, uh, this split. So man is always on a meridian and this is how he will see the world around him. It's basically like this. He sees a bit of the northern hemisphere in here and he sees a bit of the southern hemisphere depending on latitude as to how much of either or he will see. But that's, that's his one perspective on this earthly realm. He cannot see the whole 360 degrees so why, why would a fool believe that this is reality? Well a fool would. But let's say a common man, uh, an average thinking man, why would he think that's reality, a 3D globe, where no man can see the whole 360 degrees of arcs of longitude? Man only sees his view from this sort of point of view. Okay? So everything's moving around the Earth with inside this ecliptic plane area here, celestial tropical gap. As it comes around into his horizon, it is east, and then it leaves his horizon. It's what's called horizon. It comes up and over his horizon, leaves his horizon. Enters his horizon, up and over the horizon, out of his horizon, as it continues on around the earth. Back at creation, it's all vertical, because basically it's up in the vortex. Everything comes out of the central vortex. It's all vertical. But it comes around our Earth, the system, laterally. But then it comes up and over our arc of horizon. It's just the way man sees things. He doesn't see below, below his feet. It's all he sees. And if it's in the southern hemisphere, and he's up in the, in the northern hemisphere, that's his dome of perspective up in the north. Okay? So there's the two hemispheres. You could say the split cell system that way. 
But this is why they come up with the globe. The two hemispheres. But you can't see the whole thing at once. This is your portion, this is your portion. So as a model, they put them both together. Then they link them all together to create the full 360 sphere for you to get an idea of what's what. But this is no more uh, authentic, like in reality, as, as a Gleason map or a Mercator map. They're all models. At least you're not, you're not um, um, being fooled into thinking you're living upside down on these flat maps, like the old globe idea. <laughs> Magically being upside down in this part of the world, up the right way this way, but not know the difference. Total garbage, it's just a model. So, in reality, you've got the two hemispheres, and they are side by side. The two hemispheres. So, right, how do I do this? Um, Okay, well that's from that's from the south all the way to the south. So we've got here, all the way over to there. Okay, diagonally across you've got the centre north. So we have to draw that in here. So, so there's your north. There's north. Then you've got your tropics, tropical zone. So I've drawn man here. Everything is like if this is his arc of horizon. That's his his view of the. It's his two hemispheres. He is always 90 degrees to zenith. Everything comes back to him perpendicular off this arc, observational arc of horizon. So we don't need that for that now. So we have to draw in the, the tropical, the, the tropical gap. Okay. Which is in here. Which is in here, oh that's the centre, the main the main centre which is in here. But then it splits off again, doesn't it? So it comes down like this. All the way around. So there's your tropical gap all the way around here. We've drawn this over here, haven't we? Below below earth, not pito. <laughs> below earth. Doesn't concern us splits it's like a magnet just keeps splitting the field off everything up here concerns us there's your plane of inertia everything falls back to that plane that's why the sea the pressure comes up and the sea finishes here this is why we go up here and fall back down to here there's the plane of inertia everything comes back to that plane sea level so this doesn't turn the central vortex in here turns and sends all the images out here turning because it's a projector. Projector and where the screen inside the curving magnetic field. See that? That. So all the, the images that are in here inside the cycle, this vortex is turning. Look at this S cycle, look at it, it'll be turning around in our realm out here, all the way around here, right? Well look, we've got the concave sky in the southern hemisphere here, you've got the concave sky in the northern hemisphere here, the magnetic field. So the first image of in here, which is the sun, the black and the rising of the black hole, gets cast out here, then it gets mirrored against this curving magnetic field. It's a crystalline structure set up with all the moisture in the atmosphere, creates the, the image everyone sees out here, moving all the way around the southern hemisphere or moving all the way around the northern hemisphere. That's, that's your one image. Everyone gets their own individual image within their personal arc of horizon, whichever hemisphere you're in. Okay, and as the sun this, this fluctuates the magnet, the, it's a vortex, like a heart beat. This sends that sun down this way, 
and back up this way in declination over the year. But daily it's going around every day, so it comes around here every day. But it's reflected out here. So everybody on earth, we're not actually seeing this. We're only seeing our one image out here being projected off this curving magnetic field. Believe it or not. In the tropics here, they'll get theirs, I suppose, yeah. Or then again, they could be seeing that or that. No, it'll be that one there. They'll see that one. So there's there's uh, so this is this is this is number one and here the the true sun number two then you got three and three because the same and then you can break it down again go four is the individual because the sun is in many places but only seen in one every man sees his own image it's his one the fourth well he's seen the third but let's break it down. It's understanding the sun. You've got all the celestial, all the background stars in here. They'll do that turn. There's the S curve over a day and back up. That's a day cycle. Or you've got the monthly cycle of the moon. Or you've got the yearly declination cycle, sun and a lemma, doing the same thing over one year. Plenty of videos on that on my Patreon if you want to go deeper. So we're going to get rid of all this and go deep into what uh, Galileo, did I mention Galileo? We've got to say someone else. And his predecessors did not know, Aristotle, etc. So we start off with the two forces of nature. Two forces of nature coming together as in a magnet. Why are they coming together? Because the weak, weak seeks the strong, the strong, and vice versa. See in the earthly system here, the, the, magne the south is a lot wider and broader. I've got rid of that picture now. That's the weak force. Tight magnetic field inside in the north. North, tropics, southern field. See? So there's a, you could say that's one magnetic cycle. There's one magnetic cycle. Not drawn very well. And you see this in the sun's analemma. Right? There's one perspective. That's one man's view. So if he stood in the same place every year and took photos every the exact same hour of the day there's this pitch image of a sun and a lemma but it breaks down to the individual hemisphere but you, overall you can say that's, that's it it's one man's perspective of the universe weak force strong force tight magnetic field more dispersed expressed out from the center north this is magnetism you see South Pole and a North Pole. Strong force, weak force, seeking each other to find equilibrium. That's all it is. That's why you get up. You can get a bar magnet. They're pretty much like this. South, south, north, north. You bring another bar magnet in. You're going to get north south, south, north. That's going to be attracted, isn't it? To find equilibrium. That's what they're doing. <clears throat> you know, you could actually go like that if you wanted to. <clears throat> but you've got to understand the magnetic cycle. Because within these magnets, you're getting one of these, one of these cycles. Like this. 
there's the head up in the north, there's, there's this head up in the north. Oh, no, I've got it wrong. Oh, yeah, that's right. But this is confusing too because, let's get rid of that. Because Earth, this is the South Pole. There's South and South. South and South. North Pole is out here. Both Arctics are North Poles. I've been over that enough times. Check out my other videos. Anyway, back to here. The two forces of nature coming together. Boom. Creates this... Um, Planet of Inertia. It's, it's, it's the place of balance. It's called equilibrium because there's going to find some balance in here. Because of the unevenness, you get the friction. See, life is about friction. Equals the sun. That's what makes creates the sun. The friction. But the balance... But balance is found also, also, which feeds the black hole, the black hole of creation, black hole of creation, which is connected to the sun, because there's the black hole and there's the sun. They are one, but two. There's Jesus the Father, Jesus the Son, the Christ, is Jesus the Father or the God or whatever? I don't know. Well, they are one, but they are, they are also two. So there, there you find the plane, the plane of rest, right between the two fields. They never teach you what, what's between the South Pole, the South Pole, and the North Pole. What's, what's between there? What's this point? There it is there. That's the neutral, isn't it? Neutral. The sun, the sun, the sun is the uh, is the, um, the proton, and the uh, what's the other one? Um, electron is the moon. Sun, neutral black hole. Black hole. <coughs> so, um, and our whole realm is based on sound. Music. Okay? And that sound creates colour. So what happens here? We get the sound. Is it the right frequency to create this earth? Because that's balance. And it's fixed. It's fixed and stationary. It does not move. This, if this moves, then it'll move with it. But these two points, between these two points, this does not move. It's fixed. That's why Earth is fixed. So out, out from this fixed place, we get... We, we create our realm. There's one rib cage. There's the other rib cage, the toroidal field. This comes right out here. You put the center here. What do these represent? They represent the tropical gaps. The split cell. Probably going a bit too far already, but uh, let's go back, eh? So, music. I put all this together quite a, quite a few days ago, and I've, I've lost track of what else. I've lost the spot where the old mind was. Now, sound. You've got to imagine sound. So, there's the S cycle that appears inside the system. 
You put that down there. That's the gurgler. This is where the Freemasons make a lot of money by telling you you live on a ball. Because they know they know the trick. Now the sound, this sound. <coughs> so you've got to imagine sound comes out of the black hole. And this is the black hole. So let's get rid of this down here because we're only concerned about one half of the earth, aren't we? we we're not concerned about the bottom half of the earth. Because basically I've just showed you how the two forces came together, created the plane of inertia. So you've got earth now. And there's the center arctic, okay? And you go over to the south. Over to the south. Well, your vortex water get a lot of noise coming out of here. Then you've got to imagine a 2D plane above the, above the vortex. Okay? Things not too crash hot. And this is what we call the ecliptic plane. That's the ecliptic plane. Ecliptic plane. Ecliptic. Ecliptic plane. Now you go with their ball idea. A spinning ball here. Where, where's the ecliptic plane? Why would it be a plane? They draw it like this, don't they? Just a, 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 a path the sun follows. What do they call it? A plane. And they know they know this back here is actually a plane, a circular plane. There's a black hole at the centre, and it's a, a sound wave comes out from the centre. And this is where we get the planet. The planets appear on these sound on the on the high points of the wave. And the perfect frequency is basically the sun. It's got holds all the notes. All these are notes you could say, and the sun is the total of them all. Okay, he's the illuminated one. Always changing as it moves up and down. This, this contracts and expands back over the year. This is the sun's declination. Seen that in the tropics. Okay. Um, so Galileo, uh, Galileo and his friends had no idea about the sun being right up in here. See, most people just think the sun's at the centre and it was fixed. They don't realise that the sun is moving. The sun is moving around the black hole. That's why it moves around the earth every day. That's your 24 hours. But in your science it tells you the sun moves inside the uh, Milky Way, moving around the Milky Way, moving around the black hole. But they tell you it moves around the black hole over hundreds of thousands of years or something, something like that, crazy. It's actually moving around the black hole every day. That's your 24 hour day day 360 degrees around the black hole as it's projecting its light out image out here moving around moving around the flat earth system oh, what have I got here <coughs> We've got scales, balance, uh, like a lizard, scales, curled tail. Where does that come from? Went ja Nepal Tari equals blue tongue lizard, father country, Aboriginal art. Ooh, maybe I should have run over this before I did a video. <laughs> Image. From the black hole, thanks to the light of the sun. Man, moon, wave, crescent. You've got to realise um, this wave of the ecliptic plane is basically a wave like this. Right? These are the planets. But the moon is down here. Moves along here. I call her the harmonic oscillator. And this is why, you know, your science tells you it's five degrees off the ecliptic plane. She's below here. 
she, she's, she has something to do with the breaking of the notes, half notes and things like that, I think. But she's the, you could say she's the flat, not that I know much about music, but that's what she represents, the negative, the positive, negative, okay? Flat line, you're flat lining through the middle here, the neutral. <coughs> So then we need to understand like a mandibolt, mandibrot. We need to understand the atmospheric layers all represent these because <coughs> this is our realm. <coughs> this is creation. This is outside of our realm. It's all been brought over and blown up into our realm. So that you can say that these five planets. They're not planets, they're wandering stars. Well, the seven are in here. There's the seven layers. Okay? Each band represents the frequency band. Frequency band. Then you've got, so you've got seven layers. But then it breaks down to seven. And then seven. and keeps going on down, down. So you've got seven in here. Seven in there. Within these seven, you've got another seven. Reducing all the way down, like the mandibrot, if you can imagine it. It's just the way our, our earthly system is. <coughs> Breaks right down. This is, and as we rise up, the atmosphere is expanding. Falling apart, you could say, being shredded. And we're under pressure. We're beings down here under pressure. We cannot go up through there. We start falling apart. We're held down, excuse me, down here under pressure. There's no pressure up here. It's still a closed system though, and you can't get out. You can't take a pressurized thing into this non-pressurized zone. It just falls apart. <coughs> um, a permanent sound wave rising out of stationary time. But within time, there is a circle we pass through, a cycle we pass through. The cycle, but it is all a moment single of time, moment of time. It all comes from zero point, nothingness. Yeah. Um... 44,000, 44, Jeb lying on the ground represents rest or neutral or black hole. Okay. So, <coughs> you've seen plenty of uh, the ancient images show, showing you this, haven't you? You've seen this plenty of times. You just got to understand. That's where creation is. It's right there, back at nothing, nothingness. The neutral part between the two forces of nature, the South Pole and North Pole, where they find rest. And then they talk about the four winds. And they talk about the Arctic winds, the vortex in the Arctic, was four winds. Because a vortex needs two winds. Two winds, right? To work, to spin. Which is a high pressure. High pressure. Meeting. Low pressure. Okay? But this, it's a dual system. So if you take away, break it down like a magnet down to our reality, there's your flat plane of Earth. Okay. Off the centre Arctic, because you've got the ice, high pressure zone, you pulled up here. Our real sun's up here, it's room temperature, cold fusion. This 
is being sucked up to this room temperature. Same with over here. There's, a, there's the, the, the dual force coming over this way for the Milky Way, which is the Milky Way. The male, male and female, actually, he's a hermaphrodite. This is female. You've got two winds that are creating this vortex up here, and you've got two forces coming over from here, from the tropical gap. So you've got four winds, okay? Understand that? Four winds of creation. Or they go right back to this point and go <coughs> to this way or to this way. But like I say, that's, that's the initial, the beginning, but then you break it down and you've got two up here. You break it down into our reality, our world, and you still have this dual system. And then you've got, the, of course, the dual split cell of this system here, where you're separated by the tropics. Okay? Um, I'm going to stop it there because it's not exactly how I imagined it in my mind a few days ago when I wrote, wrote, drew it all out. Because on picture, on the paper there, it looks quite good, the black and white effect of the, the vortex. I can give it another go. Let's get rid of this. What have I got? I've got the black. either is it whoops not much of an artist am I with the uh, your rest curve cycle of the background stars you've got your gurgler down the middle where it's all spinning frantically that's where the sun is, right there because of that friction. And the other end of the Milky Way coming up and over there. Okay, so there's the friction. Then you find balance with the black hole. The black hole out of this finds rest. And everything's coming in and, avo and avoids this black hole spot. It spins around it. Okay, there's your friction. But so this is all seen in 3D, right? But all collapses back to the flat plane. The flat plane of 2D. 2D. This creates the 3D. Because of this creation, it's created our realm out here. In 3D. But you've got to realise everything does collapse back to nothing. Physics knows all this because they know the actual true flat earth model, but they don't want to give it to you. They describe it easier by using this globe model. Okay? And it's, under, it's understanding the ecliptic plane at the top here. So everything collapses back. This is a 2D plane. That's the ecliptic plane. Ecliptic. Plane. It's all in there. We look down on it. Concentric circles. Now you might, some of you might have seen one of Ken Wheeler's movies where he shows the, uh, you know, the magnet, the ferro cell, and all that, and he's looking down, down through the two D plane. There's a two D plane, but you can look down and then see, uh, see all this concentric circles all this depth 3d depth 3d depth well one of his images it shows you all the uh, like toroidal the toroidal field but right in here he, he, he's, he says look there's all the concentric circles it's all to do with magnetism. The concentric circles is out the ecliptic plane. Okay? 
it gets then it gets all expanded out. So the toroidal field part is the realm we're in out here, but the concentric circles are right in here are, are in this ecliptic plane. And if you want to go deep, you go right into Pythagorean theorems to do with the music, the sound, the notes. You've got the it's all in here. All the sound coming out of there. Music, music. See all these different locations of the planets. You've got the position of the sun. Where's the moon? And where are the background stars? That's why there's so many positions, millions. That's why have everybody looks different. But things must get close when you when you've got a double ganger. If you're looking the same as someone else, but everything's all hidden in that ecliptic plane. That's where we all come from. Everything just shrinks straight back, and this ecliptic plane comes back to here. Nothing. Uh, I'll leave it at that folks, but now you know, that's, I don't think anyone's explained it like that. It's pretty badly explained, but you, you've seen it all in the pictures. I think I've done good enough, okay? <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like this sort of thing, don't forget to put the likes up and share it. And uh, you might find it interesting over on my Patreon page. Cheers.